club face down the target line, right where we want the ball to end up, set our body perpendicular to the foam pad, and then just like hitting the fade, you take it back, you come from the inside, now the club face is slightly closed, we'll hit a nice little draw. And I'll tell you what, when you've been hitting a fade or a slice all your life, and you learn to hit this nice little draw, it sure makes the game a whole lot more fun. Hi, I'm Keith Fergus on the Champions Tour. I've got a device here that I think every amateur or pro golfer like should have. It's called the Inside Approach. I actually saw this about a year ago and when Jack was uh, promoting it, and I said, man, that's a great device. I've got to try that. What that does for me is, number one, it helps me square up to my target because I've got this cushion, which is cushion. It's a nice straight line. It helps my body get square. So now I'm visually, and that's what golf is. You want to see visually what's happening. So it lines me up, and then it keeps my path square and coming through on the inside so I don't hit this cushion. Most amateurs have a tendency to go over the top, so it's very beneficial for them because it'll keep them, it'll make them work more under the shot instead of over the top. And this cushion's really soft. It's not gonna hurt if you hit it or anything like that. So, and, and repetition's the key. I wanna show you also another way to use the inside approach. What I like to do is turn it around. Now, unhook the cushion and, and stick it on the very end so that now it's got me a little longer extension. And what I like to do now is hit shots this way. And what this does, we talked about visual before. Now visually, this is just giving me a longer vision of the club going back. Because a lot of amateurs, pros alike, have a tendency sometimes to get to yanking it inside or taking it out. Now what this is doing for me, it's actually showing me and feeling the club working down the line. So the longer I can work it this way, the more visual I see that. Let me hit a shot for you and show what I mean. See, I could feel that every time, working right down the line, and then turn back, and then through. And there again, this cushion's real soft, so if you do hit it a couple times, it's not gonna hurt you, it's not gonna hurt the cushion. One other thing I like to do, and I'll show you, I'll take this on the putting green. There again, what I like to do is put the ball just on the other side, step in with the inside approach. And there again, what I'm trying to do is visually get my body square to the line. And then once I'm square, square, now I work the putter back and through. I work along the cushion. The cushion's in a straight line, therefore it gives my body a nice square look. It gives my eyes a visual look. And now I just work the putter down the cushion, back and through. You can take this to the putting green. You can do it in your office. You can do it in the bedroom, wherever. It's something you can do anytime. Well, Mike, you have your work cut out for you now. Why don't you help me use the inside approach? Well, we've got it set up. Just go ahead and make a swing. See, out when you swing, you've got a different problem than most people. In other <laughs> just words, just one? No, just a couple. You, you get the club coming a little bit too much from the inside. So, what we do is we take this, we turn it around, put it right there. Now, now what you've got to do, you've got to make a backswing and your backswing goes just above it, and your downswing comes just over it. So now let's see if, let's see if you hit that when you make a swing. Ah. No, yep, that wasn't good. We found a problem. Now we set it up again. The thing I like about it is that I know that this part of the takeaway is so important, and I have a three-dimensional cue where I'm going. That's it's awesome. See, so visually now, make me a practice backswing and just go back slow and then come down and get a feel for what you've got to do to miss that. There you go. Okay, okay now nice and slow. Let's do it slow first. Back and just try to make impact. Awesome. Wow. We got us one swing challenge here again. That that really was that was as pure as I've hit a seven iron in a long time. That's dramatic and in two swings. So but well, the, I reason, do that again. the reason is because now you can see what it is you have to do and you've got some immediate feedback. And this thing, even though it won't hurt you, which it won't, the fact that your fear of hitting that is greater than hitting the ball, you'll actually make the corrections. So it's a really interesting thing when it comes to teaching. Now you're so afraid of hitting that, which won't hurt you if you did, 
you end up making a better swing yeah, well, and a I better path into the ball. Nice and slow. You don't want to go at it fast. You want to get a feel. You're changing the path of your swing. That's awesome. Two out of three, no curve I'll on. take that. I'll take that. And I can trust to tell everyone. This was take one. If your car's not working properly and you take it into the workshop, what do they do? They give it a diagnostic test. If you go to the doctor and you just say you're not feeling very well, what does he do? He asks you what the symptoms are. Then they run some tests. I'm going to give you a way of using the inside approach here, and actually I'm going to use two of them at certain times, so you can run some diagnostic tests on your golf swing. Remember, you can't fix what you don't understand. If you don't know you're doing such and such a move, you're not going to fix it. That's where feedback is so important in improving golf, accurate feedback. So I call this sort of advanced inside approach work. I'm actually going to set these up a little differently. So let's, let's do the diagnostic test first of all to see if you belong to the out-to-in slicing family, which yeah, I would tell you is, is a good 75 to 80% of golfers in the world. Even if they don't think they are, most golfers are to some degree or another, they're swinging across the, the ball incorrectly and either pulling it to the left or slicing it to the right. Now, you have to be careful when you're setting up the inside approach the way I do to get it just right, because there's not much room for error here. This is a severe diagnostic test. Okay, here's how I want you to set it. We're going to put a ball on a tee, and then I'm going to put a club on the ground. This club's going to come out of the way again in a minute, but it's just going to be on the ground and you'll see why. And I'm going to say to you that this club is pointing directly at my target. Now, if I really want to do a strong diagnostic test to see if I'm swinging from out to in, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my club and I'm going to bring it probably about back to the head of the club, which could be, that's a good two feet. But you can see I didn't bring it inside that club. I didn't take it outside that club. I just took it right along the club there. So that the angle of the shaft is the, the relative to the ground. The angle is the same here as it is there. That's very important. Don't do that. Don't do that. But you set it about here. Now, I'm going to take the first inside approach that I have, that one will go over there for a moment, and I'm going to drag it in, and I'm going to have the cushion at 90 degrees to the target line. And I'm going to bring that in until it's almost touching the shaft. Now, any engineers out there or mathematicians or people who study physics might say, ah, why are you not touching that shaft? I've got an answer. Because when we swing, the shaft does tend to go up a bit, centrifugal force and other things. So I don't want you to put that cushion in absolutely touching the shaft. That would be too severe. You want to give yourself, I have found a good thing, is about two to three fingers there. So really I've got the first one correctly positioned. So if I come from inside, on plane, inside to along the line, I wouldn't hit this one. Now, if you only have one inside approach, that's still a great diagnostic test to see if you're swinging out to win, which you're going to have in a moment. But like some of my students, if you have two inside approaches, you can really see how correct you are or not. Now, the other one, because we're doing the out to win diagnostic test, the other one is going to go on the front side of the ball, and I am going to put it here. Now, I'm going to do really just the opposite. I'm going to take my club, put it towards the end of the grip that's on the ground, and I'm going to set this club in where the cushion is about 90 degrees to the target line. And again, now you can clearly see here, if I just tap one, I'm going to move this club in a moment. Don't, don't you hit balls like that. I didn't ask you to do that. Don't you dare do that. But if I'm swinging on a plane that's either straight or even a wee bitty to the right, then I'm not going to hit cushion one or cushion two. So that's your diagnostic test. Okay, let's see if the teacher here is good to his word. 
can I go with any speed, any gusto doing that? Now, whenever you have a workstation, you always want to keep putting the ball on the tee because you can't be moving that ball around all over the place. Otherwise, you've got to move your inside approach, your inside approaches every time. This is a strong diagnostic test. It will tell you if you are out to in or not, and most of you will be. Okay, I'm gonna set in now. I'm gonna go with some gusto and we'll see whether I'm an in to out or an out to in player. And I can tell you, I don't think I'm gonna hit these cushions here. Didn't think I would because that's not my era. All golfers belong to one of two families. You either belong to the family who hits slices and pulls, or you belong to the family who hit hooks and pushes. I am definitely a hooker and a pusher of my golf ball, so when I turn these around, you'll see it's a lot harder for me. But there's your test to see if you are swinging on a correct path, like so, like so. There's room. Now, let's say you do hit this one. What could you do to avoid it? Well, it's telling you too steep, but what could you do to avoid it? Wonderful thought. Perhaps the greatest thing I ever learned from working for Jack Nicklaus, I had the pleasure of working for Jack for seven years, and this was one of the thoughts he gave me, and I use it just about every day when I'm teaching. Let me just get a club here. Jack said, when you set up to the golf ball, Imagine you have a steel rod through your shoulders. I'm just putting a club across my shoulders to do that. Obviously, as you set up, that shaft is parallel to your target line. As you make a backswing and you turn back, the shaft that's across my shoulders is now at 90 degrees. Or you might just say point to the right. Now, here's the necklace thing. Keep the line across your shoulders pointing to the right as long as you can. The longer you can keep the line across your shoulders pointing to the right, ladies and gentlemen, the more likely you are to swing from the inside and up and out to the right and hit you a nice powerful draw. Now, most people, they've perhaps even heard it on television from some of the commentators, you must turn to face the target as soon as you can. I say thank you to them because it keeps me in business as a teacher. If you go to the top and you turn immediately to face the target, you will not just get one inside approach, you will probably get both of them and there's nothing good in that. So there's your diagnostic test to see if you belong to the out to end, the slice family. Okay, obviously I don't. Typically, the lower handicap players belong to the other family. So I'm going to reset these and I promise you this is going to be a lot harder for me now And as you might imagine, all I'm going to do is flip-flop that. So what do I do? I create a target line. You cannot do it without the reference. Okay. I am now going to take this one, which is on your side of the ball, and I am going to put my club behind the ball. I'm going to slide it along the club on the ground, and I'm going to put it here. Now this one, I can be far more demanding here than I could on the other side because if the club goes up a bit here, that doesn't matter. So when I'm doing it on this side, the, the hook test, I can take the inside approach and I can have it just about touching the shaft. And on the follow through or the after the ball part, actually let me just remind you, I'm turning this so that if you hit the cushion, it comes off very easily. Important point there. And uh, you'll just see when you get your inside approach that it's much easier to come off one way than the other. And this one, I'm going to put on the target side. Now this would be very much the way that perhaps a VJ Singh might practice. I've actually seen VJ practice with a shaft on the ground, like so. Perhaps he should call in and get an inside approach. Um, but this gives you, as you can see, a different path to swing on. Now, if I'm swinging too much to the right, or what is typically called into out, or as Tiger has named it, you are trapped behind. What are you behind? Well, you're behind the inside approach is what you're behind. So done properly, I wouldn't hit any of the cushion. Now that's the chip shot, just because the club's there. You might want to start with just a little chip shot with either of these diagnostic tests. This would be especially good for your short game, by the way. 
if you struggle with your chipping and your pitching, very strong chance that you're swinging out to the right. The shaft stays on a plane, it's on a plane there, it's still coming from the inside but not too much so it hits the ball and it's still going back to the inside but not too much so okay. Now I'm going to go with a bit more gusto. This is much harder for me and whoever is watching this tape, even if Jack or Tiger were watching this tape, I promise you one of these configurations will be much harder than the other for every golfer who plays. Now guess what? The one you find the most difficult to do is the one you've got to work on the most because that's where your progress lies. Don't do the easy stuff. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to try and make sure my swing goes on a better plane, not out to the right, and here we go. Now that actually produced a slight fade, not a bad shot. So if you hook the ball too much, if you push the ball out to the right too much, this would be a fabulous way to practice. So two advanced ways there to use the inside approach. Now, let me just finish by saying this. Every time you don't use your inside approach, it won't help you. But I promise you, if you get out and you use the inside approach, whether it's one or two, you're going to see your game improve and you're going to see it improve a lot. And that's a lot of fun. One of the things that we need to see in, in chipping is that the club has to have a little bit of up and down. We've talked about how there's, there's got to be a little descending blow. To make the descending blow, which is not a physical action, it's actually just the club going up and on its way down. One of the most common faults we see as, as instructors is that when someone hits a chip shot, they don't have any, any elevation to the club head. The club doesn't get up, which is a lack of wrist. So we want the wrist to naturally go up. I'm setting the inside approach up here to show you how to use it Th this way. This is, this is really good. Just take, quite honestly, it's just about a pace, maybe two and a half, maybe two feet back behind you. Set it up. This turns all around. When, and you want to set it up to where it always breaks away with the, with the blunt if I happen to hit it. So in this case, I'm going to set it up. I'll set it up about here.